Let's look at the different ways of displaying items on surveys. Whenever you're using survey making uh, software, you have to choose what form of the item or the question you want each item to be in. Now we're going to be looking at uh, specifically at the examples provided or that uh, you have on Google Forms, but this would be true for SurveyMonkey or Qualtrics or any of the other uh, uh, survey making uh, uh, apps. You have to choose what type, what form you want the, the question to be in. Now, I encourage you to use Google Forms because it's free and it works really well. Um, and uh, if uh, now there's a free form of Qualtrics and a free form of SurveyMonkey, but it doesn't give you all the data, it just gives you summary data. So you can't really analyze the data and test hypotheses with the free form, you have to pay for those versions. But Google Forms gives you all the data for free. So that's why I recommend Google Forms and it's pretty user-friendly. Now, the first type of item that I want to look at are the multiple choice, or sometimes they're called radio buttons. And these items give you a list of choices, but only one is allowed. So if we had the question, last month, did you buy something from Amazon? You say yes, no, or I don't know, and you click on one. But then if you change your mind and say, oh, no, I don't know if I bought something last month, you click on I don't know, and that will unclick on yes. It won't let you um, uh, uh, choose more than once. It only allows once. This, this is called a radio button because in cars that have radios, you press one button and you get one station, but then if you press another button, it'll change it to another station. You don't get two stations on at the same time, only one. When one goes um, on, the other goes off. The next type here are check boxes. And check boxes are typically square in uh, the survey world, whereas multiple choice are round. And uh, check boxes, uh, you can choose more than one. For example, where have you lived in the US? And you can check all that apply. Now, I would go the West Coast, that's where I've lived a good part of my life. Um, I also lived a couple of years in the Rocky Mountain states, and I've also lived overseas. And so I would check these three, and that's allowed with check boxes. Now, a lot of times with check boxes, the if you don't, if if things aren't comprehensive, if you don't cover everything, which is often the case, um, you might want to put in another an other fill in the blank, and you can have other where you don't fill in the blank. But a lot of times people want to fill in the blanks so that they don't feel like their group is excluded. This is especially important for uh, race and ethnicity because you get a, a real diverse group, you're not going to get everybody's race and, and, and identity, uh, ethnicity. People are, some of the people are going to choose other and they're going to put in what, how they identify themselves racially or, or uh, ethnically. So these are check boxes where you can choose more than one. Now, we also have linear scale or scaling questions. And here we have two anchors, two endpoints, and then a number of points in between. And these questions work pretty well. How much do you like research methods? Not at all to very much. And then people choose between one and five. And it, um, it, people can do this uh, uh, pretty well. Um, and it, it works well. And it's a little slow sometimes compared to a, a grid that we're going to look at uh, later. But this is called linear scaling or a scale, a linear scales or a scaling question. You just need endpoints, and people guess what two, three, and four uh, mean. Now, um, another uh, option is a drop down menu. And a drop down menu is where you have to press typically a triangle and you drop down and it gives you a list of places. Maybe it'll give you a list of 200 countries. Where do you live or states? Now, generally, people do not like drop down uh, items. They make mistakes. It's hard to scroll and land on the exact same thing, especially if you're dealing with older people. 
you'll just get some nonsense answers there because it just doesn't work out very well. So in general, you want to avoid a drop-down menu. People just don't like them. Um, now, if you're like asking somebody's age, you might think, well, yeah, I'll give them a drop-down menu between 1 and 100. Ah, don't do that. And people don't like that. They'd rather type in their age. It's a lot quicker for them. And that would be a fill-in-the-blank, a short answer. Um, and uh, um, that can be something like, what is your age, which is not difficult. But also you could um, ask a, a kind of a, a, an open-ended question, like, what did you like most about stats? Now, these open-ended questions, generally, you don't want to make them required. Um, because people don't like typing, they don't like writing out sentences, they don't want to write a, a, a paragraph about something. They just want to go through these surveys quickly. So if you do have a fill in the blank, always make it optional, unless you've got some hypothesis like about age, then you can make it mandatory. But it, it too, too easily, they're, they're considered burdensome questions when people have to type out answers. You'll get a very low completion rate. And even more difficult are fill in the blank uh, uh, paragraph or long answers. And in Google Forms, if you have a long answer, you click on that, and it, that line will spread out to a text box. And it'll look like you're supposed to fill up the text box with a long, large paragraph. And people's hearts will sink, and they'll say, this is a lame survey. I don't want to do this, unless they are extremely motivated. But don't count on it. So don't make a... Um, uh, long answered questions uh, required at all. Now, one of the best ways of doing surveys is with a Likert scale and in a multiple choice in grid format. And here's a, a measure of extroversion. What we have over on the left is we have short, uh, statements, and here we've got a seven point Likert scale going from strongly disagree to strongly agree, and um, so I am talkative, okay, uh, agree, I'm reserved, disagree, I'm full of energy, strongly agree, I'm quiet, slightly disagree, and people can go through these questions really quickly. And these are, the, these are the, the way that you should ask items, ask questions if you can, because it allows people to go through uh, things very quickly and very accurately. Now notice that you should always have the low scores on the left and the high scores on the right, the negative on the left, the high on the positive, because that's just how we think, going from um, not good to good, nothing to everything. Um, so all through your survey, they should be in the same uh, direction. So if at all possible, put your uh, items in a multiple choice grid format, and you can get people to fill out an 80 question survey in like five minutes if it's in this format. It goes, just goes really uh, uh, quickly. So uh, now you don't want to make it too long because if it's more than like eight or 10 items and they can't see what the different columns mean, so you break it up into uh, uh, shorter grids. But this is a really good way of uh, measuring um, psychological concepts is uh, with this grid format with these all these Likert items.